wherever you are, you'll see people in cigarettes. You won't even notice it unless it's pointed out to you. The habit of smoking is just a part of everyday life. These people really believe that cigarettes mean something to them. The cigarette is a tube of paper filled with loosely packed, chopped up tobacco which burns slowly given the proper draft. In many ways it can be compared with a chimney. When a chimney smokes badly, it means that the fuel in the fire is only being partially burnt, and all kinds of gases, dirt and steam are spreading into the air. No one would think of deliberately inhaling the thick smoke from this stack. The soot and gas would soon choke one to death. Yet a cigarette is also a chimney. And the pleasure it seems to give people hides the very real danger it holds for the lungs. The human lungs are a delicate mechanism and they can't be easily repaired if they get damaged. On the inside of the breathing tubes are very small hairs which are like eyelashes and are in constant movement. On these, a layer of sticky substance called mucus forms, which is constantly being moved up the breathing tube as if on a moving staircase. In the normal way, any small bits of dirt which enter the throat stick to this layer and are removed upwards. This is the lung's defense against dirt. The smoker, however, sucks in gas, smoke and all kinds of dirt. Only a fraction of which is breathed out again. The smoke inhaled temporarily paralyzes the little hairs inside the throat so that there's no moving escalator to protect the lung against dirt. Smoke also irritates and causes more liquid mucus to form. Since it cannot be removed upwards, it falls back into the lungs and if it stays there long, there's a danger of it plugging up some of the smaller tubes. Infection grows in these warm places and a cough on top of trapped air works like bursting a paper bag. If much of this goes on, the damage done becomes really dangerous. The victim becomes permanently breathless and then ill. A healthy lung looks like this, a more or less regular fine mesh of tissues. But much of the delicate structure of this lung has been destroyed by smoking. A man with a lung like this is permanently breathless and often too ill to get about at all. This man used to be a heavy smoker. Now he's a helpless invalid. I just want you to step up and down on these steps, Mr. Major, as I tell you. Right. Come up, up there. Right gently, that's right, down the other side. Turn round. Two years ago, this man could swim with his teenage son. That's right, but now he can't. Now, would you like to sit down there? Tell about as much as you can do. No, tell his son not to smoke. This is a smoking machine, which was specially invented to imitate the way a person smokes and to collect scientifically the tobacco smoke which goes into the body. The throat of the mechanical smoker is a glass tube and the lungs a glass bottle and it smokes like six people in a row. Every puff is counted. After being given only a packet of ten each, 
their throats are stained with tar. Even this small amount can be taken away and analyzed, and if the mechanical smoker goes on long enough, you can soon fill jars with this cigarette tar. A week, a month, a year, five years of smoking 20 a day would fill these jars. This enormous beaker would be filled after 20 a day for 20 years. Of course, not all this stays in the body, but part of it does. Scientists examined this tar and found many complicated chemicals in it. Though smoking is not the only cause of lung cancer, it is the major one. And at least 16 of these chemicals are already known to produce cancer. Research is still going on to find out how these work in smokers. It's taking a long time because one can't experiment on live people. As a result of what scientists have discovered and doctors know, it's difficult now to find a chest doctor in this country who is still smoking cigarettes. And here's another reason. Imagine these two orange blocks as representing in tens of millions all the cigarettes smoked in 1910. Here are the amounts which have been smoked since then up to 1960. Compare this with the numbers of deaths from lung cancer during the same years. They're in thousands, but still going up and closely following the rising cigarette sales. Though not everyone who smokes gets lung cancer, no one knows who will. Lung cancer is an increasing menace. Why? Because people are encouraging it by smoking. There's no mistake about this, Mark Ewell. Cigarettes can kill. And if they don't kill, they can rot the lungs. In this bottle, there's the lung of a man who was a moderate smoker till this great cancer grew in his lung and killed him. If this man had known what cigarettes were going to do to his lung, he wouldn't have smoked. You do know. When one is young and feeling fit, one thinks the body can look after itself. Even when one realizes that smoking can lead to chronic bronchitis or heart disease as well as lung cancer, it's a habit which is very difficult to give up. These boys and girls may think it's clever or grown up to be seen with a cigarette, but they don't realize that for every day they could actually be shortening their own lives. Smoking in public may seem daring, but it's hardly glamorous. This side of smoking is never shown in advertising. But it's much easier not to start than to stop. Don't think you can't stop. I used to say that, but then I saw the damage that cigarettes were doing to my patients, and I stopped. If you don't smoke, you will save hundreds of wasted pounds, and you'll stay fit. Now breathe deeply. People with healthy lungs can really enjoy life. For people who are smokers, it's a different story. <laughs>